towards the innovation ranking. Let's keep it the same. No, I know. I know. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. We want to make sure that last one. That's not. I introduced myself. She wouldn't hear my belly tone. Actually, she's still listening to the audience. She's never lost. Did you hear that, John? Yeah. Jerry and I talked about that yesterday. <laughs> okay, Dave Black, thank you. It's a pleasure to call the meeting to order and put elect the chair. Um, first item on there is uh, elect a committee chair. So I'll open up the um, floor to. Go ahead. I'll nominate Terry Wedder for chair. Okay. Any other nomination? Well, I guess Terry will use a second. Yes. <laughs> Any other nomination? Any other nomination? Terry is the chair. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Terry, it's all yours. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is nomination for a vice chair. I'll entertain nominations for that. nominations for vice chair? Any other nominations for vice chair? Any other nominations for vice chair? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of Tom Crudo, say aye. Opposed? Okay, Tom, you're the vice chair. Next thing on the agenda is approval of the minutes from April 10th. Uh, if you And this is not 3D or anything, but it just kind of looks like it's a, it's a, a outline. I've been taught that the minutes are an outline. Really? Okay, and then I was looking, and again, not to be critical or anything, but I was looking at some of the other minutes that you prepared, and um, the motions were italicized. Do you want that done? I, I think it would be helpful if you're going back and looking minutes that they would stand out. I can do it later. Okay. That's the only other thing. Otherwise I would move to approve the minutes. Okay, this motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes of April 10th. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Okay. The motion carries. You guys discuss the minutes before that. Because we have no idea what happened. Why our minutes right now are not up 
there's rich on them that actually, but there are minutes, they aren't their minutes, should be able to tell people what happened. The advice of legal counsel is that the minutes reflect official board action. Yeah, I know. But, have to, but doesn't mean you can't have everything. I've argued this one and talked to too many people and it's very easy. It's a subject of discussion. No, it is, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody should make your comment. Okay, the next item on the agenda is public comment. Is anybody here for public comment? Yeah, Gary, I'd like to introduce myself to everyone in the room. I'm late. I'm Mike Raven, I'm from the Lavishton City Council, third district. They appointed me to be on the, as a non-voting member of the Emergency Government Committee. So I'll let that have any meaning. I won't vote on anything, but uh, I'll have to have some input or whatever. I certainly will bring it forward. I was on the committee for 16 years as a city council before. Pretty familiar with what goes on. So appreciate it. Yeah. Any other public comment? I'm going to put you on the center table. All right. Any other public comment? Okay, then we'll close public comment. Uh, first thing on, next thing on the agenda is emergency management, monthly report. Tom? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, as most of you know, I've been out since the 14th or the 15th of April. I actually injured myself on the 13th. So I could fly off the side of a ladder, and that does not work for fat guys like me. Uh, multiple fractures in my left leg, tibia, and socket, hip socket. I was hoping to be back part time this week, but uh, the reality is it'll probably be uh, next week. Uh, working with uh, Jamie set up a temporary desk 
Yeah, well, are you pleased with getting eight to 10 new people? I am, they're, they're at the first responder EMR level, which is, is fine. We've been sponsored between one and four going through the EMT class. Um, you're not bring that out to the satellites anymore because you can't get enough people. Uh, we could do a hands-on for that EMT level in Lady Smith if we had 10 people from Ross County, which we have not had for years. So. Sponsor them and send them to race plate. Um, and we have a few that are going to continue with that, that are EMRs and all that are going to continue with their EMT training probably this fall. And I'm, I'm quite happy with 10 first responders that take more where you get them. That's what we have, that's what we need to get this class started. This is 10. What's the drop dead date for signing up for that? Well, since we're doing it here, it'll probably be the first night of class. So that'll be yet to be determined early June. So I've got a whole list of people both in my email and on a clipboard in my office, which doesn't do me much good here, but I know where it is. Uh, 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 people's phone numbers and emails to get a hold of them to get the information to them once we get the class set up. Northwood is working on all the paperwork and the class dates and all of that stuff. What needs to be taught each night, so once I get that put together, then we can set dates. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of that will depend on the people. I mean, if, if eight out of the ten can do Tuesday night, then we'll do Tuesday nights. It doesn't matter to me. So, um, and I've got a couple of other instructors that are going to help with that class. <clears throat> All right, next thing on the agenda is payment of the bills, and we have them listed before you. Are there any questions on? Those. Some of your new ones, these are, this is not a, a big listing this time, but you see the type of different things. <coughs> Again, this is just for the ambulance. Any questions on that? Just here, what the COT maintenance, is that just a regular? Um, are you saying cot maintenance? Yeah. Yeah, we pay a monthly cot, I mean, or a quarterly cot maintenance fee where they come out and they make sure they're lubricated, that they lock right, that they everything works on them. Okay. That takes the liability off of us for that. Gotcha. Thank you. Any other questions? Any bills? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve payment of the bills. Is there a second? I'll second. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the motion is made and second to approve payment of the bills. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the same. Okay, bills have been approved. Uh, next thing on here is the budget review.
Initially, what was that grant for? It, it was a um, uh, uh, actually have to help me what you call them, the COVID dollars. Um, okay. ARPA. It was ARPA money, and and we were going to buy a twelve lead monitor with it, and the twelve lead monitor didn't come in for almost eight months. Okay. So that was beyond the grant period. That's what I I took that paperwork and sent it to state that this is what we purchased, and they're saying I still didn't spend the money. So that's Okay, and that of the of those monies, can you do you have the option to reapply that, or does it only go specifically for that piece of equipment? You had to apply for certain equipment. Okay. And that's we were short one because we didn't have one one ambulance, so that made sense. They're okay. about thirty thousand, a little over thirty thousand dollars, so that we were going to buy it between our money and other money. We had the money. Okay, any other questions for Tom on that? Okay, now is next one is your favorite part you've been waiting for, mold. Maintenance, okay. maintenance so, of effort. So Terry wants to tear into you guys about this, so I'm gonna hit you first before he gets at it. But from the ambulance perspective, what the mold is, uh, maintenance of effort is, I have to verify ambulance training, ambulance certification, number of ambulance employees, um, be able to justify response times and send that to each and every township uh, signed form that the, the state uh, provides us with um, and send it to them individually to each township uh, that we certify that all our staff is up to snuff basically and that we're doing things according to state protocols and stuff like that. At the towns, villages, This is the new uh, state requirement uh, to keep somebody employed on Madison. Um, both the EMS person of your township, which Tom is for the whole county basically, and then also uh, your fire protection person, whoever you have a fire contract with for the township. The fire chief and like Tom have to fill out this form Basically, it's checking boxes. Uh, the new requirement has just come up. We're hoping they still kill it, but what's pretty official now is they've got all the forms out and they're having a training class on it coming up. And so they have to have their things done to each township by June 15th. And then the townships have until July 1 well, or June 30th to get it entered into the state system uh, for them, or if they don't, then the towns lose 15% of the shared revenue. 
and the shared revenue went up quite a bit this year, and nobody wants to lose 50% of shared revenue. So, again, this is a brand new thing. Um, basically, it's saying, and you can correct me on this, Tom, but that they're providing the service, same service as was provided in 2023, is being provided in 2024, or 2022 is being provided in 2023. So, it's um, basically, it's just a one-page form, uh, like Tom has to do it and check boxes, and then give it to the clerk. Clerk, town clerk, doesn't do anything with it except they have to attach it to their. They have a one-page form that they have to fill out, and they attach the EMS uh, certification and the fire chief certification, and send it in. Well, it's got to be electronically done because that has to be done by July one. Something brand new. Uh, a lot of people are probably unaware of it yet, but it's got to be done. And so, Tom, Tom is aware of there. Uh, as far as I'm with the town of Flambeau, we go through the city of Ladysmith. Whatever township you're in, whoever is your fire department, that fire chief has to sign off on it and give that form to the town clerk by June 15th. So it's something brand new. Um, it's really kind of worthless. It doesn't prove anything or show anything or accomplish anything. It's just more paperwork, but that way, um, you have to do it, otherwise you lose 50% of your shared revenue, which we don't want. Sorry. So is that about it, Tom, for now? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at with the mole. We'll keep working on it, we'll get her done um, for everybody. It's just another thing, like, like Terry said, uh, the state gets to say, hey, we gave you more shared revenue, we gave you more money, now prove, because everybody's begging for more money for fire and EMS. So they say, oh, we gave you this hump of money, now prove that you're actually spending on that year after year after year. And that's kind of what this thing does, but it does give somebody in Madison a job that will all this paper. Plus the fact but they've been talking about it for a long time. You give you, what, six weeks to do it. Yeah, they just after pop they it out there and say, you're not gonna get They've been talking about it. I think we heard about it from the convention last year. Yeah. Yeah, they've been talking about it. They finally did something with it. And then, yeah, like Bill said, they don't give me any time to get it done. And I can't verify, you know, <laughs> I can only verify the numbers that Connie gave me. You know, I know what Town of Washington pays to the county for EMS through their tax roll because that's the number Connie gave me. That's what I know. So I'm not really verifying anything on behalf of the township. I'm just verifying those numbers so and I think right. the fire I mean the fire department I mean we have a contract and so we know what the city is saying that you know, fire protection for the town of Flambeau how much it's going to cost the community but again there aren't really numbers on there I think they just check boxes that did they have adequate training you know blah 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 and so right. it's really just more information. Okay, I anything else, Tom? Uh, that's it for me. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to mute you guys. I mean, I'm going to mute me so that you don't have to listen to me over here. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Okay, thanks, Tom. Um, okay, let's move on to medical examiner. Uh, monthly report. Annette? Hi, I'm Annette. Um, back to you, the medical examiner for the new people here. Um, do you, oh, do you well, know? I know Kurt. Do you know? No. I'm so um, lost. Okay. Really okay. Oh, yep. Okay. Good. Now I know. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I remember. Um. So, um, just to let you know that there's a key at the bottom of my sheet here that I'll kind of explain what each thing means when I go through it. Um. For the month of April, we had um, six natural deaths. Um zero accidental, zero suicide, zero homicide, and zero undetermined, for a total of six. Um, we did zero autopsies um, in the month of April. I signed eight cremation forms. Um, I had five hospice calls. Uh, I used zero on-call hours, and I had zero donation calls. 
Um, I really, uh, just to let the board members know, I'm, I really like the monthly um, training that I'm getting. It's um, very helpful. Um, there's a new subject every, every month, and so that's working out very well. Um, discussion of any departmental issues. Does anyone have any kind of questions for me, what I do, um, anything like that? Anybody is welcome to call me at any time on my cell phone, um, ask me questions about what I do. And um, if anyone wants to do a ride along, they're welcome to do that. Um, so you can see what I do firsthand. Um, what else was I going to tell you about? Oh, there's also the resolution that we've been going through, and Phil had suggested that we change the wording on the resolution. And so um, Ashley has changed it. It's attached at the very end. It's a little ways in there, I think. Um, and so underlined, or how did we do that, Ashley? The underlined is the new wording. So it's like um, on line 21. Um, in addition to the monthly stipend. Um, and then on line 29, um, the pay schedule for the medical examiner's office is as follows. And um, down on line 40, um, conferences and <clears throat> duties that fall outside the scope of a case. So that'd be like if I got called out to the members. Um, if I got called out and it actually didn't become a case, I wouldn't get the, <clears throat> the stipend that I usually get for a case. Then I would just be paid by the hour because usually it's about an hour um, that I just spend doing something and then it turns out that it's not really even that case. Um, but this is just really tidying up the wording, really. Right. They yep. didn't change anything. Yep, Ashley no. did that for me. So I just wanted you guys to be aware of it before it went to the county board. Oh, okay. So we need to approve this wording change? No. Well, it's still in the way like how it, we like how it looks instead of the word incidental. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> How that's going? Okay. And how it works between you and your staff, okay. assistants, whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. How many hours they do? How many hours you actually work? Oh yeah, yeah. I can do that. Okay. The no training requests. Nope. There's no. Uh, okay. Uh, payment of the bills. There's one bill. One um, for office supplies. On that, um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the bills. So moved. Second. 
<laughs> you know, no new members, you on. are allowed to <laughs> they're just express quitter. an opinion. They're just quitter. They're just <laughs> quitting on the draw. In case the motion is made, second. Oh, you don't want to embarrass you by raising it. <laughs> Approve uh, the bill for the medical examiner. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed aye. the same. Motion carries. Okay, budget review. Okay, the first budget here uh, is probably about the final one, supposedly, for 20 to 23. Again, looking the episode, well, in the middle column, there was just 12 to 31 to 23. Uh, this is, again, last year's budget. Uh, do you have any comments or any? Um, it's pretty much so, it's, Yeah, it stayed the same. Um, Great from, from last, last month. month. Yeah, month and, yeah. They, they supposed to update it, but yeah. So you can look at that. If there are any questions on that, and then turn to the next two pages. When you look up there, where it's got in the middle column, like twelve thirty one, twenty twenty four. This is the current year, um, and again, that would be four months. So if you look at that. I know, I know um, next month, or this month, whatever, I'll have a couple big, like some autopsy bills that came in, stuff like that. So it'll probably, the 85% will probably go on the bill to me. So, but we're staying right in the same thing. You have no concerns at all? No, I have no concerns at all. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, Jim, if you just a second. Yeah. Should we have a motion to support the EMS doing that highway project so that some of them are concerned? Or is that automatically called that? Mm -hmm. The highway came out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't have a motion for that. Okay, I'm just asking. Okay, any further uh, questions? For the medical examiner, any other things to ask? Anybody? Okay, then let's move on. To, thank you. Next. Thank you. Let's oh, one more thing. Um, if you guys need me later, just phone call. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the sheriff's presentation. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, for page uh, April, we had the population average of 30, uh, one on the monitor and two halts out of county. Um, both of them are Huber transfers and there are no costs out of the county at this time. Uh, they're there because they work in that county and they have Huber services, so they make arrangements with that county. To do this. So, no cost loss on that. See the training that was received uh, over the last month, and then uh, uh, two requests for upcoming training, which we can get to on that. Okay, you see what it is here. The one for Rock B is approximately eight hundred and ninety-five dollars, and the one for Mike Anderson is thirteen fifty. And why don't you take us to school about it? That field school is a field training officer. Uh, they're, the, they're the officers that uh, train in all the new people. Um, and the enrollment conference. Uh, it's the Wisconsin Narcotic Officers Association. Um, it's uh, one of our investigators uh, who is dealing with most of our drug work right now. So, yeah, so good for them. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the two training requests. All right, motion to approve. I've <laughs> 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 got the stereo going now. <laughs> okay, motion to make seconded to approve the two training requests. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same. 
that's a whole different theory. So is is Steve kind of going more so what Riley was doing? Um, we've not pushed him that way, but he is landing that same kind of stuff. Kind of seeing Riley because he got confidence that he was going to get that back to the team a long time. So it's an annual comment that they can say, oh, Riley was Riley. Um, you can see in the next page of the meeting, <coughs> meeting that I attended, um, our upcoming major event is the Law Enforcement Memorial, which is next Tuesday, 7 p.m., scheduled at the Amphitheater Memorial Park. Um, kind of looking at the calendar, we're kind of calling for rain on Tuesday, actually not. Um, as, if as that, a, I'm sorry, just to interrupt, but as a, as a committee member, um, I highly would recommend looking for a one time more event in case it is um, it's very worthwhile to get that there so we um, and the way it's the way it's gone and presented is it's awesome. It's, it's, everyone should attend that event. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. Um, with the rain that we do have the OLX uh, church as a backup. Um, and we'll make a decision probably Monday night or early Tuesday morning um, to go and then we'll put some the information out that it is moved to the OLS school. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, any other standard stages that come along with all the service, the housing, overtime costs? Why don't, why don't you explain for the new ones about like number nine, calls for service? Okay, calls for service, them are just a few of the of the calls that we take that kind of ones that we really like to keep an eye on. Um, accidents, um, in 2023 we had uh, 505 accidents and we've already had 117 this year already um, with two fatalities uh, in our county. Um, you can see the numbers compared to the year one number that we are really are watching closely is the weapons offense. The last one last year that more than doubled, uh, and that's any call that is in reference to any kind of a weapon, gun, knife, well, whatever that all falls under that. Um, then we're just the seriousness of the call that we have to deal with. And I just like to highlight that one. I, I just have to know this. I'm sorry to interrupt you again, <laughs> but the. Um, um, Sexual assault is that it seems to be up. Yeah, it's, it's an every week thing anymore, which is just terrible. It is a, something that's climbing down for us as a city of Lansing. And the girl drove on just like all because we lost an investigator, right? No, well, uh, part of it could be part of it. Yeah. The other, the next page is uh, housing costs. Um, them are uh, what we house for the state um, and other counties. And for the state, I mean probation and parole. Um, they are felony offense. We get paid for them. We get paid to house them. Time. You kind of keep track of uh, traffic, which is the parole field that's that investigated overtime. Um, so you can kind of see where that's at, um, see where our numbers are over the last four years, five years. And what are you short staffing? Uh, right now we're short three in the jail. 
room. Actually five, but we have two in a field train and three we just offered uh, one week. So we'll have the, uh, five in that field program, uh, which would put a full staff up there. Um, on patrol, we're still short two. things on the on the budget uh, for snow patrol for that authority is uh, uh, money funded through the state based on uh, uh, some of those patrol activity contacts citations all that we will not receive anything uh, for 2024 due to two days of snow <laughs> so kind of out of my control there but that will be So you understand that one. that would be the reason for that one being under budget all the way. Thanks for allowing that money about clean up the trails and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did reach out to our grant guy for that just to make sure for next winter we won't lose out on anything and he assured me that because of the way that we have everything will be a full share for next year. So. Okay, then the next page is the current year budget. about here this is the medical for a jail um, 
we, we are under contract with a, a, a firm that provides the doctor, the nurse, and the meds uh, for the jail. And we, we have the nurse 15 hours a week um, on site, uh, doctors on call 24 seven by phone. Because they do come every three months. Every, the doctor comes every other week. Every other week. Okay. So just so you understand, it's something that the contract we're under. So. Yeah, it's up right now, I think. Yes. Okay, it's up. Uh, if you look at the bill, the first bill on the list of bills, it's a monthly charge. Southern Health Partners one did not include medications that came with. So if we had added the ten thousand dollars on top of that, which the next correction like it had built in, it'd have been pretty equal. So we currently have the advanced correction health care, so instead of reinventing the wheel um, and starting over with everything, we negotiated with advanced correction health care. going to uh, go with advanced correctional health care again for $98,084 a year. So I did take this to finance last month and they requested that this get on the fiscal year cycle because right now it expires in the end of June so it runs to July 1 and we need to carry it on the next year. So um, I contacted Advanced Correctional and have the current uh, contract that I will be taking back to finance in May. Um, with a monthly, it's a monthly payment of $8,173.57. And that is an 18 month contract. We'll do this the rest of this year, all of 2025 until expired December 31st, 25. So that'll keep us on the fiscal year. So the reason this came up this year is um, advanced correctional health care covers multiple states. Um, in, I think it was Missouri and Illinois, Indiana, one of the two, um, they got some legal issues challenging the scope of practice for a licensed practical nurse and what their job duties were. So, Advanced Correction Healthcare decided to wash their hands of all licensed practical nurses and go straight to registered nurses across the board. So of course, our nurse was a licensed practical nurse. So with that comes, of course, an increase in price and we were getting a record because our nurse was basically retired and just did this as a side gig to get the money to do and was not willing to take the bridge course that her point that she wanted to, to, to help me with the RN. So um, and that's where we are right now, that we're, we're going to stay with ACH and we need to get that contract to come. But again, I'll take this to finance in a couple weeks and at their request. Which is always funny because most of us, when we go see a doctor, see an LPN on the hospital. Oh, yeah. But for some reason, well, the company's been this for one year. Yeah, that, that, and, that and I think other states might be different and that's where the issues were coming. It wasn't an issue in our state, but because they say that we're just across the board. Good reason to do it. Yeah, yeah. hard one. And, and the reason that uh, we went with the, the proposal uh, was because the increase uh, was 20,000. 20, yeah. Um, yeah, it was almost Very substantial, 000. so we thought we would see all we could get out there. Um, and yeah, because right now we're paying seven. Yeah, 
that this hundred seventy two I think is what we see right now with an LTS. So it's roughly on our end, of course, for flight, for business, keeping the streets running. So that, that's how we got here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, we've got a new number, so. Right, you, you need a motion. A motion <laughs> for me to take this to fire. Yeah. Okay, is there a motion or an LT to <laughs> take <no> this? <laughs> yeah, they wanted me to come back. They requested I come back. Well, the official minutes say that your contract for advanced directional um, <laughs> is to be fully taken on board. Directional or traditional? Well, I'm just reading the minutes. I thought we discussed that we could just bring it right to board with that 12 month, the six month and the 18 month contract from there, and then we were going to save time to not take your finances and go straight to board. Because if we refinance, it doesn't matter. Project update. Um, we put out uh, bids for proposal or request for proposals uh, for the tower upgrade. Uh, we got a couple back. Um, one was through uh, Gentown, yeah. out of Eau Claire, and one came from Motorola itself through Gentown, who we have now. We um, sat down with Motorola to um, look at their numbers. We didn't like their numbers. Uh, it's the product we want and would like to have. So we discussed with them. Um, had a couple guys here this morning. If you guys can introduce yourself. So I'm Chad Oshevsky. I'm an account executive for the area. Steve Kutch. I'm the director of the Wisconsin Public Safety Network, which is a public private partnership that is uh, deploying public safety first responder uh, communication systems across the state of Wisconsin. So uh, sitting down with them and going through some of the things that we like, dislike, wanted, did, didn't want in the contract that, or in the proposal that they had shown us, um, they came back with some new numbers for us today. I think you guys have the original proposals. We'll get you copies of it. Um, so they're here with uh, uh, some updated numbers, and I don't know if you guys want to explain them or you want George to explain. 
So yeah. you, George, what do we like? I would rather have you explain them. Sure, absolutely. I mean, we, we briefly talked about them, but I don't want to be. Yep. Yeah. So when we, we can I ask you to come up to the front? <coughs> yeah, absolutely. I had a circuit breaker pop last night and lost my hearing aids, so they're on charge this morning. <laughs> absolutely. Where, where would you like us to sit? And I lost my microphone. Be right here at the table. Okay. You can come. So we did do a, uh, a preliminary design meeting last week uh, where we talked uh, about some of the scope uh, and we were able to reduce some of the scope and transfer some of the scope to the county. Uh, so that re reduced the uh, purchase price uh, to $2,712,122. Uh, and then we uh, further uh, had some discussions around the scope of the maintenance of that system going forward over the next six years and we're able to significantly uh, reduce those numbers um, and and George I, I think probably it makes sense to, to share those numbers uh, in, in a document rather than to have you read through them right but the uh, the total the total project uh, for, for a six-year um, commitment and, and that six-year commitment is important uh, because it allows you um, it, uh, to, to uh, submit an application for the innovation grant, uh, which was a program that was approved in the um, shared revenue bill that was signed into law last year. Uh, so it's not the number of receipts of the funding uh, after you sign the contract. Uh, so the total was three million one hundred and eighty-eight thousand three sixty-eight for those six years. She's been trying to put the numbers up here, but she has. Would you like that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear back in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so with that innovation grant, uh, the way that works is you, you compare the, the contract price that you signed a contract for to what it would cost if you did not combine services, in this case with the pri uh, private entity the Wisconsin Public Safety Network. Uh, and then that difference is uh, the amount that you save by executing that contract, and then you are eligible up to 25% of that cost saving as a grant back to the county. So you would be looking at a savings of $3,681,951, which uh, you would expect to then receive an innovation grant of Nine hundred and twenty thousand four eighty-eight. Uh, that then you could use to apply. Uh, uh, you, you could apply that those monies to the, to the to the project, or you could you know that's that's just money you get back for, as as the county reviews those bills. Any questions? Yeah, exactly, right? It's really hard to just to, to, to talk to it with, uh, without seeing numbers, so hopefully. So uh, I guess, what was the first number, the 2712122 what was that again? That's what who came up with? Yeah, that was the purchase price to essentially deploy the, the, the system, uh, as well as the, all of the, all the products that, that make up that system. So this includes installation? Installation. Equipment? Yep, optimization, all of the equipment. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Yeah, to get um, to get on board so that, so that uh, basically replacing your existing so our officers can communicate throughout the entire county. Yeah, all, all of your first responders. Yes, correct. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, does that include like the city or no? Yeah, the city uses this and frequently uses it. And so is the city responsible for? I, I, there's never been a charge. Part of this that's not included in the Motorola side is the uh, internet connectivity to link all of the towers together uh, for working with Bruce Tell and Brightspeed to get their pricing on what it would cost us to tie the fibers together. 
give it order for the simulcast to work with all the powers talk at the same time, they have to be linked. They got to be connected. They got to be physically wired together. Um, you looked at microwave option. It's not an option. The towers are too far apart, and the geographic of Ross County is not. The sight lines aren't, aren't good. So the only legitimate option is to physically wire the tire towers towers together. <laughs> so are, are we going like this to you right now? Well, so let me let me let me kind of catch up here a little bit if I can. Right now we have four towers. Four towers. Four towers. Five towers. Five towers. Yeah. Where are they? Okay, we have one here in the city. We have one on Norwegian okay. Road or Bayou. Uh, we have one in Ingram and one just south of Shelburne. Okay. Um, each tower is its own tower. Um, we have to change our channels to talk off of each tower. So our issue is, is if we have somebody west and someone east, they can't hear each other or talk to each other without going through dispatch. So the upgrade um, for this is was either to go to a microwave system or a fiber system, which is called simulcast. And what that simulcast is, is that when we key the mic, whether it be a dispatch here or control, it opens up all of them at the same time. So no matter where you're at, you're gonna be able to hear them. Um, like you said, we looked at the microwave system, which is um, basically hanging big dishes, huge yeah, dishes, dishes on the towers, on the towers and which requires uh, load studies and, and some of the towers wouldn't be able to hold that weight with the wind and the, the snow and all that. Right. And the yeah, other for sure would not hold that. And then there is the fiber option, which is technology today, everything is through fiber. Um, we kind of chose to go the fiber way. And um, what he's talking about with uh, Bruce Dell and Brightspeed is a fiber connection to the tower. They have to be able to um, get in and get out, but if there's a cut in the line, it has to be able to back the other way around. And so that's and that's all over here to me how that all works. But that's kind of kind of where we're at, where we kind of cut that out of their original proposal that they were going to take care of that. We pay them, but we're going to do it locally. It sounds like that's going to save us some money that way. But anyhow, so that's kind of brings up that make a little more sense now. Okay, all right. You kind of had that look on your face going on. Yeah. I, when we, I go to these meetings, I sit there like that all the time. Because it's, they're <laughs> it talking is, about it all is very, stuff. very confusing. Yeah. It's very, very so, tough. Yes. Well, last, um, last week we did have a meeting. Last week? Yes, sir. We had a meeting with Motorola, with Brightspeed, with Bruce Tell to, first of all, to see if it was even remotely possible to tie all this together. Everybody seems to agree that it is a doable thing, so we're just waiting for um, Brightspeed to get their numbers back to us. Um, Brightspeed, the biggest issue with them is from the village of Ingram to the tower is a little over a mile, mile and a half, and there is not fiber to that tower. So they're going to have to bury fiber to that tower. Um, and then figure out the loop. Yes, and then figure out the loop back so that fiber gets cut. So, Bruce Dell does have fiber out that way. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're, yeah. they're right there. Yeah. They're, they're literally right there, which their cost is going to be very minimal. Um, but I'm kind of leery at what price we see for that one. So. so, the tower then on our region, that actually covers then like up to the county line? Because, uh, yeah, it's north and west. The issue that we have is the southwest corner. Right, so how is that? I mean, how so does the system this, cover that? In this radio upgrade, we're going to add a southwest tower. You're adding a tower? Yes. Okay. okay. So there's a brand new uh, Verizon tower right at Island Lake, right at the intersection of Chippewa Avenue and Highway 40, that we have uh, a lease agreement started with. It's called Tower North, actually, owns that tower. It's just a company that owns towers. Um, just waiting for basically the approval for this project to get approved and then we can start the uh, FCC licensing issue for that because we didn't do that yet because it's all based upon this 
this project to be able to fund that extra tower. So and then that tower then will cover? Yes. That's the Southwest corner. Okay. Yeah. Well, I did hand up. Yeah, George, when we have that discussion George, before the board. The green is the coverage. You're talking board. about that uh, area that was kind of dead for communications down there in the south part of the Yes. Yep. And then the other thing is That's we don't have to do that evaluation yeah. on the tower That's just uh, to quickly yeah. hang the dishes out on the other Right. The loads the, the load studies are included in, in this price, <coughs> but okay. we don't have to do those because we're really only replacing the two antennas and the cabling that's already there. In, in just preliminary, when when their engineers went out and took pictures of the towers, there's at least two of them that would not hold the microwave dishes. So we had to replace the entire tower, which again would have that been was a big question. Million a piece probably for a tower. Uh, yeah. Minimum. Yeah. 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 And I don't think tower has fiber. Yes. Yeah. It's, it goes right by it. Same thing with the Norwegian tower. It's within it's within a couple hundred yards of the of the tower. So. And that with with the implementation of with this proposal, then that's gonna that's gonna clear up our communication issues throughout the entire county. Yes. Yeah. That will also be for fire, EMS, first responders. Everybody uses the same system. Most telling one one of the officers in the corner down there came to work and it was heading to work and what would you say like five six mile or minutes before yeah. he even heard the message that there was a dispute in Shelburne and so he was actually going the wrong way so and that happens all the time well it does Shelburne is our stuff is old and it's really starting to show and it, it's further complicated by the fact that you have to be on the right site to be in the area that you're in so right. if you're not on that site you would Well, that's just kind of a, a little bit of an update that we wanted to bring to you. Uh, we'll bring you uh, some more hard numbers um, at the next meeting and hope to push it to the county board uh, for approval of one or the other um, in June. All right. So that's kind of where we're headed. And I guess you run through those numbers originally, you know, roughly, it was 2.7 was our initial thing. Yep. So, so the third line there discounted yep. total two two million seven twelve one twenty two, yep. and then your out years. Uh, unfortunately, it's not totaled because there are some optional items that you may or may not choose to, to uh, include. But yeah, didn't you have a two point one million? Yeah. So then, there? so then the the. Two 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 point seven million, and then the one, two, three, four, five. Well, this is the most Yeah, so yours uh, two through six that total to the. Uh, I think I do have that number. Three million. Three one eighty. Three million. Yes, exactly. So that's the overall charge for through one through. So that'd be yeah one through through six, through six years. Yes, correct. And hopefully we reduce by nine hundred thousand. With the innovation grant, that innovation grant, yeah. correct. Yeah. Basically, with that grant, you guys can put in for it as soon as our contract is basically signed. Yeah. Is so that sort of automatic, or is that a long process where we wait and chew our thumbs? And uh, uh, so, so there is there. You, you do have to fill out an application yeah. and turn it in, and um, you know, the, depart the department the department is it's good. Well, there's 300 million that was uh, approved in the budget, uh, and so uh, they have yet to uh, give out any grants. Um, no one has applied for a grant yet, um, so um, it's very specific on what qualifies. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I, so, so we qualify. I'm, we I'm, will, right? we will. Yeah, I'm from, I'm from uh, Racine. Uh, the, the speaker wrote the, uh, the the innovation grant language. Um, I've had a couple of meetings with the speaker. He's my rep, uh, and he he was like, "Yeah, this is exactly you, you know." I, I presented him a couple of different uh, options um, that, that with, with respect to exactly what you're doing here, and he said, "Yeah, this is exactly what we intended when we when we approved this." So the, the last figure that you gave, if you want to ask, was the three six six 
Million six eighty one nine fifty one. That is the savings that you would. Uh, that's what you would save by joining Whipson as opposed to building the same system all on your own. Okay. Yeah. So that's the number that they base the grant off of. So they take twenty five percent of that number of the savings number. Of the savings number. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we wanted to make sure essentially that you guys knew what it would be. You guys took on the responsibility of your own and then allowing Motorola through the website network in order to. So I think Derek Derek sent a a two sheet page. Did you get that? that um, on the grant? Yeah, that kind of walks you through the grant and how, how that. Uh, and that, that savings is over the six year period. Over the six year period. And that's the maximum. And the reason we looked at a six year period because that's the maximum uh, amount of time that the innovation grants allow for you to calculate savings. So. so we're gonna we're gonna ask both both vendors uh, to our property in June, um, so that they can give a presentation to the property as a, their final presentation um, before it goes to the county board. So if, if you, I mean, we'll bring you the information here at our meeting. See the presentation and come to the property and um, yeah was there a deadline on that grant or there yeah, they don't. yeah so the grant the grant uh was um it, in the bill it was uh structured for three years three years okay. and so um we're almost through the first year already okay uh, so it started in fiscal year started in the last fiscal year, so which was July 1st, 2023. Um, so there's 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 uh, essentially two years of a month or so remaining. And then now I, I expect that because there's been very little of that money spent, none of that money has been spent. I, I would expect in the next fiscal year that they'll right. remain that, that 300 million they yeah. start tapping into that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. The, okay. There. So there's the kind of the, the summary for the innovation grant. So how long of a process is it to get approved on the island and the tower? Um, basically sign the contract and have the FCC give us their blessing. I mean, yeah, so what, what, that's what, federal, what, I mean, are they going to drag your feet on that? You know, they're, no, they're, 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 they're usually pretty quick. Yeah, exactly. Months, yeah. <laughs> We would essentially run that in parallel with us building the equipment and manufacturing the equipment, so it really wouldn't it wouldn't delay the project at all. Okay. So typically, uh, I would say ninety to one hundred and twenty days to get a license approved. So just so so you understand these numbers, because I had to have them explained because I didn't understand. <laughs> um, the standalone system um, that would be our cost if we built it on our own um, by joining Whipson. Uh, which would get us into that grant, that would be the cost there, and that would be the savings if we went with Wisman versus the um, standalone system. So. Has anybody, I mean, in in this particular case, then has any any entity ever been rejected to join or get on the specific tower that you know of? Um, it, it happens. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty rare. We tried to get on um, Tower Hill down here down in Tolcom, the big tower there. But there was a interference of frequencies yeah, that could override. A one point one to one in one million chance that if we'd all key the mic at the same time, somebody wouldn't get out and so they don't allow that. So we couldn't get on the tower down there. So well, do we face that with Island Lake Tower, do you know? Or um, we could, but there's no other radio frequency there close to ours that I would think that would interfere. So so one of the one of the steps that you have to do is you have to do an interference study at that site. And so it sounds like the site you at there was probably another VHF channel. Oh yeah. On yeah, Chip will Chip will use a lot. Yeah. And so uh, that that's that's pretty common if you've got a couple of VHF channels uh, located at one site that you can very quickly get into a, an interference issue. Uh, but
But if there's no other VHF to use, not that I'm aware of, on Lake on Lakeside or no, just a cell tower. Yeah. Right? Oh, it's just no. a cell tower. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that that is a completely different frequency band. Very very much separated. The only thing that's on it. Yeah. Is I don't. Right. So just a um, scenario. Support. I mean, just saying. Suppose that we were rejected for whatever reason as to on that tower. Would then our next option have to be to build a tower? Well, I, I mean, if there was an interference with that frequency, we could probably look at a different frequency on that tower. That, that would be that would be one option. Uh, we would also look at, I, I, if we got to that point, there would be a number of different options that we would look at. Changing frequencies would be one. Uh, th there's also the ability to potentially um, use combining systems uh, to essentially you reject the bad frequency and, and typically what happens and I'm going to get really technical and I'm sorry but um, you, when you transmit on a frequency it's it's not like the energy goes right in that one frequency right you that if you actually think of it as so it, it, it's very wide the, the, the RF energy that goes out and it, it kind of goes like this and it goes like this and gets bigger and then boom that's your main frequency where all of the information and then you go like this well it's these little little bumps down here that interfere with the other channel that might be there and so what you can do is you can filter that so that so that there's they call it notch filter and what that does is basically matches that out so that energy doesn't get out it doesn't go out the antenna um, so that's an option and then of course there's always the option of looking for another tower that's that's nearby so, so there's there's lots of ways to mitigate if there is an issue um, but I think our preliminary studies have shown that because it's a cellular site the likelihood of there being an interference issue is very very small well, and these things are uh, restricted I mean so like I would be able to get on and hear the calls and everything like that I mean well, that fre that frequency's out there, and you know that's what scanners do. They pick up that frequency to listen to what we have to say. So yeah, probably can probably can get on there. I mean, if they got the frequency number. But then you could switch frequencies if there is like some. Well, we have what we, 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 we can scramble it a little bit. Right. Um, or what do they call it? Uh, encryption. Encryption. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, and that is part of part of the package of that would be for <coughs> transmitting back and forth amongst uh, ourselves only right yeah information that would not right that we don't for public yeah. relations yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 for an application like we we're just describing you might have to modify some of these things as you go along will that be included in the grant application or could you do that amendment the application, or you know what I mean? You said you might have to modify some of what you get going. So, so, the modifications that we talked about for the um, if, if, for example, the the FCC didn't allow you to license on that tower, right? So, that then we would essentially that would be processed as a change order, it really wouldn't impact the grant because you would put that grant in as soon as you. That application for the grant, you would you put that in as quickly as possible after you sign the contract. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I suppose the the state would probably want you to adjust your savings. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you would handle all that part of it too, not Jeff. Or yeah. I, I mean, we would yeah, work with you. Yeah, yeah, we would work with <laughs> you too. Yeah. Like, yeah. George got enough to do with He's all. got the yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't submit the grant. That has to actually has to come from the county. But obviously, we're going to support you. And we'll throw it on Ashley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, right. I want to make sure that that part of it. Yeah. yeah. But, but again, yeah, I think. Well, I think, just think that one question, Tom had. It gets pretty quick. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? You you kind of uh, basic down, but yeah. the thing is, uh, you know, how many people in the room would know what you folks know? Right, right. So uh, again, I think the likelihood of that frequency getting rejected is is very very small. Okay. Um, and so uh, it's not something I would loosely go over. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Good. Okay.
Okay, so kind of where we're at, we'll, we'll bring the hard numbers to our next meeting, uh, we'll presentations at the property meeting, um, so they don't have to do two presentations. Um, and then we'll shoot to the county board in, uh, on, in June. Okay? So that's been discussed with Hawkins, so it's no surprise that they're gonna lose. Thank you, guys. Yeah, well, we haven't got that far yet because I just we want to make sure everything's ducks in a row before we start. Well, it's really going to get rough if all of a sudden they hear about it. Yeah, what we're doing. Yeah. Well, we're, but the we, factory's not there, that's not the issue. But then they also said that they can put a booster. Yeah, 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 something inside the building. Which, but it, it should be related to the fire department. Yeah. And then the other thing is, I think, and I would be willing to do it, I think we should have a motion. That there would be two committees meeting with property, us and property, that's been done before. And I think everybody here should sit in that meeting mm -hmm. and learn everything. Okay, sure. Yeah, like it joins. So yeah. we'll call both meetings to order at 8.30, do the presentations right away, and then you guys can leave if you want. Property continues. Yeah. Okay. Because we got, I sat in on all of them, and we've got people who haven't sat in on any of them. So I think it'd be informative for yeah. us to be there yeah. and discover our place by having an agenda. A debate on that thing? We're just going to make one up. <laughs> yeah. The first Friday. Second Friday. So that would be on June 14th. Thank you. Yes. And Interior, are you okay calling a meeting of emergency services then? With property? Yes. Yes. Okay. At 8 30. You need a motion? At 8 30. A motion for that? No, as long as there's consensus and the chair is okay with it. Yep. So put that on the calendar for June 14th, but the time is 8.30, that's on property. Oh. Okay. Um, acceptance of law enforcement drug trafficking response grant. I'm gonna kind of let Miranda. This is it right here? Okay. So, this this is the one that we so this is uh the deadline for acceptance was april 30th 2024 uh was a grant for 36,726 uh, for drug trafficking um, john caleb signed off on approval and acceptance of that grant then the grant money will be in, will be reimbursed expenses to cover equipment and the grant is to improve drug traffic enforcement, surveillance, and or other covered equipment only. I guess it's just to bring up to date that we accepted this. I was thinking then maybe from last year that we can cover and accept it. Also thank you. Thanks for thirty six thousand seven hundred twenty six dollars. Okay, the motion has been made to accept the law enforcement drug trafficking grant uh, by this committee. Uh, any further discussion? Questions? We only have a motion. I need a second as well. We have to wait. I've been waiting for <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's been seconded. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the same. Motion carried. Okay, thank you. Um, next is recruitment and retention. Um, we will be doing a presentation at the personnel tomorrow. Um, we asked to speak with them about uh, through the hiring and retention of employees um, based on why people are leaving, based on their exit interviews and things like that. Um, so we put together, I don't know, five, eight slide, nine slide presentation to show what it's costing us um, to hire a person through FDO program and then we lose them within the first year. Um, so we want personnel because they're the ones that um, need to help us figure out where that needs to be. Um, Majority can't talk or think today. 
but anyhow, so we're gonna do the presentation um, to see if we can't come up with a way to keep people from leaving. Um, we've lost on social numbers how many in the last five years? Twenty-four employees in five years. What's the majority of this due to wages? Um, it has a lot to do with wages and benefits. So um, some of it is other things, which happens in life. We get it, but yeah, the majority of it happens. So that is kind of our where we're at with that. So that you're meeting with him tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. That's it. Three. 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 I'm sorry. Three. Um, review of Geo Reserve Program and wages. And this Paul's writing was resolution, right? And this the amended resolution uh, is the next uh, bullet point here for the Reserve Deputy Part Time Wage Compensation. Um, we had a resolution out asking for an increase in the wage for our reserve program. Um, we've been now getting interest in people being reserves in the jail, um, which would help offset our overtime um, because they're willing to, to pick up shifts when they can. Um, I think there's a requirement of two shifts a month that they have to work to stay in the program, but they would get paid just a straight wage, no benefit, nothing else. Um, and we would like that to be uh, $25. Uh, we should have a copy of the uh, amendment, or the resolution, I'm sorry. What, what is the current point? They're at $20. Um, they are not on the Detman. No, they're not on Carlson just, Detman. It's they based on the resolution. They don't get any kind of benefits as well, so that's why it's important to make sure that the wage is there. The resolution in your packet specifically is for reserve deputies. Um, since the packet went out, some issues came to light with also including port security in that, which is no longer so, so I have here is uh, an updated to that resolution, which would include uh, the court security officer who is making 20.87 um, an hour. Same thing. Payment of pay only, no benefits, no nothing. Um, just kind of hard to have this one making this one and this one making that, and it just causes controversy within the department. So, all of our part time, I want to put across the board at $25 an hour. So, that includes the transport fee in that bill? Yeah. yeah. We don't have anybody on the transport fee. But they are included. In that but they are included. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But technically, they're not part-time employees. They would be classified as casual employees because they don't have any scheduled shifts. Required or weekly hours. Yeah. We classify them as casual, and I think that's what was written in the resolution. The amended as casual. So this uh, both groups have been approved by personnel. That goes tomorrow. For tomorrow, okay. And uh, so the court security officer position is removed from established wage scale, so they're already on one now. Okay. So, you know. so the court security officer position was placed on the wage scale. That was a decision that was made by prior administration. We are not sure why that decision was made. Ashley and I both disagree with that position being on the scale because of the casual nature of it. I, we don't think it ever should have been placed on the scale. So we need official board action removing that position from the wage grid and making it clear that from this point forward the wage for that position will be set by resolution like we do for the employees. Not the casual employees. So that, that is $25 via this now then. Correct. So effective that, June 1. Yes, so effective June 1 that position is off of the wage scale. That position will no longer get general Increases, colas, anything that might be applied to the scale, that position will no longer be included in that. That position will be lumped now with the their other deputized officers. Yeah, yeah. Adult deputized officers. Mm -hmm.
Mike's got a question over there. Yeah. Uh, actually, how does that work? Now, if you get a straight wage, you know what I mean, with no benefits, but I mean, you're in the hand, it's kind of a hazardous duty thing. Well, what happens if someone gets hurt doing that? They are still covered. Do they sign the a waiver? Do they sign a waiver? Or, you know what I mean? Well, they're, they're an employee for the for the county, and they're still covered under our workers' comp. Well, yeah, would casual be, employees would still be covered okay. under work comp. So when we say there's no benefits, there is benefits to protect them with the 25 dollars well, right. Technically, that's really not a benefit. Yeah. That's a requirement that we oh, have yeah. to provide that for. Well, no, but I mean a requirement or whatever. But, but I, and you know, it's kind of a precarious place up there. You know, anything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they would be covered. Very good. Yep. Yeah. Motion to forward to discount. I believe that we would need a motion to approve with the amendment. Oh, okay. Yeah. To that. <laughs> no, we have a, that's just a copy. Oh. He's got the color copy for him. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll second it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So repeat the motion. Um, approve resolution as amended and forward to personnel and county board. Any questions on that? further discussion and finance okay and finance um not your head okay <laughs> <laughs> any further questions on that the okay, motion has been made and <laughs> seconded i did second it okay uh, any further discussion all those in favor say aye aye all those in favor motion carried usage of the highway gas pipes kind of brought to our attention that finance is concerned about the fuel that we're buying at quick trip um about the only car full car that buys gas at quick trip here in town is me um and my reasoning for that which i've done that since we went to quick trip was to keep that um, account open because of the savings we receive when we travel uh, transports training and all that we like for our guys to, to gas up a quick trip because we get a savings on the, on the fuel from them this all came about a few years ago um, when the gas prices started climbing and um, we we're trying to really cut our budget uh, and I could get gas with the savings cheaper at Quick Trip. So we got cars, all of our guys are buying gas at Quick Trip. The county said, no, we want you to use the gas in the county, which is okay. So everybody has gone back to the gas pumps except me because I want to keep that account, make sure there's somebody. And, and I fill up there once, maybe twice a month, uh, depending on how much travel I do. So um, occasionally, um, um, our, our armored vehicle we fill up here after training or an event that they fill up a quick trip because we have quick trip cards. So there really isn't a lot of uh, usage here in town at the quick trip. If we're out of the county, uh, we like them to go there just because we can get some savings off the quick trip. Um, that allows them if the pumps to the highway shop go down to go back to quick trip, right? What's that? The pumps go down, they haven't for a long time, but they used to go up and down. Right, yeah. So they will be allowed to go on a quick trip because they need gas. You gotta have gas. So, anyway, so that's 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 our reasoning for our usage at here in Lady Smith. So no. you have seven for donuts. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> but anyhow. So I don't know. Do I need to go back to finance and give them my spiel? Or you want to take it back to them? <laughs> I guess I can take it back to them and see what happens. Since I have a target in my back, and I'll a number of other things. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be more happy to come and explain it to them. I, mean, I, I, guess, I, I guess the issue had come up because they looked at them and they saw like 400 and some dollars a month being charged to Quick Trip. 
it just says quick fill. And they thought the savings are not, if they fill up at the highway department where they're supposed to, the savings are greater there than if they use quick trip. Right. And so they mentioned that, well, with the Trump um, that well, they stop in there on their way home or away uh, work and get coffee and they fill up with gas, it's convenient and everything like that. And they're saying, no, we're going to pay more than if they had gone half a mile down the road and filled up at the highway shop. So that's why that was brought up and so they wanted to bring it here. And what you're saying is that basically you're the only one that does keep the town active, but if they're like in Barron or Rice Lake or some other if they're place, out of county, out of county. like for them to fill up a quick trip. Right, because that keeps the, um, the thing. Sometimes there's places that are at, they need gas, and they just use regular county car buy it at BP or whatever. But and when this came up, there was a vast difference between the two, too. Yes, there was. So, I mean, I guess I can bring it to back to finance and see what happens. I, you know, I, I just think that we should buy gas wherever it's the cheapest. Yeah, that's my yeah, what kind of savings are you quick trip? Five percent. Five percent? Yeah, but every time I've ever been it, the county's always been cheaper. I would work with Trevor. I mean, you know, I mean, so the, yeah. I mean, at the city, we buy all of our gas through the county, other than a premium, because they don't have premiums right. for our small engines. We don't, we don't buy a premium. But um, yeah. that's just my opinion. That it, yeah. it should be bought wherever it's the cheapest. It's the same gas. That's right. That was the point of the finance yeah. committee that was. Well, it's true yeah. with a bigger quantity, you buy it, or more often you buy it a year, the cheaper it does get done. Well, right and when you buy it, that price goes up and down. And yeah. and we, get, we get a notice every time they get the yeah. 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 Every, every tanker at the company, every tanker that comes in, it's a different price. Yeah. Pretty much, you know, but, uh, yeah. so. Okay, so you want me to take it back? To it's, the right. it's up to you. Yeah. If you want to, otherwise I'll come. I'll try it. All right. If you want me, give me a call. Back up. Um, Okay. That's all I got. Anything else? Okay. Um, are we going to go into closed session now? Okay. Um, we will now go into closed session to review a performance improvement plan relating to employee job performance pursuant to Wisconsin statute 19.85 parents 1 parents for considering employment, promotion, compensation, performance evaluation data of any public employee or the, the government body has jurisdiction or exercise authority. Um, vote. Right, so I'll entertain a motion to go to closed session. Second? Okay, motion is made and seconded. I'll roll call vote. Kurt? Yes. Tom? Yes. Yes. Um, so we are now in closed session.